Most people don't want to be told that they're too sensitive. To a lot of people, sensitivity is looked at as some sort of a vulnerability or a weakness or some sort of a personal flaw that needs to be hidden or overcome. But what if most people's views on sensitivity are all wrong? But what if sensitivity, even high sensitivity, is a real biological, even evolutionary advantageous trait that is actually the sensitive person's biggest superpower? If you're someone that's ever been told you're too sensitive, if you've ever felt like you need to hide or get over or overcome your sensitivity because you viewed it as some sort of a weakness, or if you've ever felt like you don't quite fit in somehow and you think that might be tied to your sensitivity, stay with me to learn what it really means to be a highly sensitive person, find out if you are a highly sensitive person, and how this realization just might change your life the way it did for me. So what exactly is a highly sensitive person, or an HSP as it's often referred to? An HSP is someone that's got something called sensory processing sensitivity. Now this is different from sensory processing disorder. Sensory processing sensitivity is a genetically inherited personality trait that's found in roughly 20% of the population and it's split evenly across sexes. Now because it's a personality trait and not a disorder, this isn't something that you can get a diagnosis for, but it is something that you can actually see in brain scans of highly sensitive people. Now what being a highly sensitive person means in practical terms is that we tend to take in more physical, emotional, and social stimuli than other people, and then we process it much more deeply as well. Now this tends to show up as heightened capabilities in a few different areas. Now the first one of those is empathy, so we're really highly attuned to the moods and emotions of everyone around us. The second one is creativity, and a lot of us tend to be artists or designers, innovators, entrepreneurs, and we're usually pretty good at coming up with novel ideas and looking at things from various different angles. The next one is sensory intelligence, and that just means that we're deeply aware of our environments and we tend to pick up on subtle details that others might miss. This could be things like subtle scents, textures, tastes, sounds, micro expressions on a person's face, typos, brush strokes in a painting. All of this helps HSPs to be really intuitive. The next thing is depth of processing. So since we take in so much more information, it usually takes us quite a lot longer to process it. But because we have that extra time to process, this can lead to things like really careful decision-making skills, novel ideas, and a really good ability to connect the dots. This also tends to contribute to that high intuitiveness that HSPs tend to have. The last one is depth of emotion. So we tend to feel our emotions really strongly and can sometimes be completely overwhelmed by them. Now these of course are all really incredible gifts, but there is a cost that comes along with these gifts and that's overstimulation. So sometimes we're just taking in way too much stimulation from all around us and our, then our brains basically just cease to be able to process it all at the same time. So it's kind of like taking a glass and filling it up with water and when that glass gets full, there's nowhere left for that water to go. So it just sort of like overflows. And that is essentially how it feels. So every one of us is sensitive to some degree. Sensitivity is actually a spectrum. It's a continuum. And HSPs, they just tend to live at the far end of the continuum. This trait of high sensitivity, it's not just found in human beings. It's actually found in over a hundred species in the animal kingdom. So cats, dogs, birds, even some types of fish and insects, primates, all have roughly 20% of the population that has this trait of sensitivity. And researchers think that this trait exists because it provides an evolutionary advantage. Because highly sensitive individuals in whatever the species tend to pick up more information from our surroundings, we tend to be more adept at recognizing threats, which allows us to avoid those threats more readily. And this increases the odds of survival for the entire species. Now, I had no idea that this trait even existed until a few months ago. And when I started reading about it, it was this massive aha moment for me. I've always felt a little bit different, even since childhood, like I was one of those shy, quiet kids that would sort of um, just hesitate and exist on the sidelines, watching the other kids play. You know, I wouldn't be diving in there myself. I'd just kind of be observing. Um, I've always, tended to feel my emotions a little more strongly than other people it always seemed to me. I've always been really deeply affected by other people's emotions. You know, if my husband's in a bad mood or if we have like a minor argument or something like that, that can just stay with me all day. 
I also have found throughout my life that being around groups of people for long periods of time is incredibly draining for me. That's one of the reasons why I really don't enjoy networking. So, you know, when I'm at a business event and I've just been listening to three or four speakers in a row and then there's a break and everyone else just wants to network and gab each other's ears off, I'm like, oh my God, I have to go and stand in the corner and I'll just like pull out my phone and pretend to be doing something just so that I can have a few moments of silence and try and process all of the information that I've just learned and I just don't have it in me to start talking to people. And that's always made me feel a little bit weird. Another thing I've noticed is just when I'm in conversations, like with friends, it takes me longer to process what's being said. So I end up oftentimes being quiet in these conversations um, because, you know, somebody might offer a couple of points, I'll be thinking about it, and then by the time I've actually processed what they've said and I'm ready to, to offer my own opinion, the conversation's already moved on. And so that results in being, me being quiet a lot of the time, unless we're talking about something that I've actually already given a lot of thought to. So in those situations, I've often just kind of felt like, am I just unintelligent or am I inarticulate? That's just how I felt. And on a physical level too, I'm super sensitive to caffeine. Um, textures really bother me. Um, so like clothing tags, if I can feel a tag or a loose thread or something, it just drives me insane. Harsh lighting really bothers me. Loud noises really bother me. All of these things in com combination, they just kind of, I end up feeling like an overloaded circuit board sometimes. And I've never known why, and I've just kind of thought there was something weird about me until discovering this trait. So are you an HSP as well? Now I have linked to a comprehensive self-assessment down in the description below. So you're welcome to check that out. It's probably gonna be very illuminating for you and make a whole lot of sense if you are a highly sensitive person. But we're gonna go through a shorter assessment right now that really just captures the basics of that longer assessment. Um, this sort of mini assessment is something that I adapted from a book called Sensitive by Jen Graneman and Andre Solo. And I've linked down to that in the description below as well. I highly recommend that book. And then finally, before we go into the assessment, remember, because sensory processing sensitivity is not a disorder, this is not a diagnosis. This really is just a tool to figure out how sensitive you are and where you fall on that sensitivity continuum. So let's go. If it's easy for you to pick up on other people's moods, emotions, or empathize with others, if it's easy for you to notice subtle details that others miss, so micro expressions on a person's face, typos, that sort of a thing, if it's easy for you to see and be drawn to the beauty in the world around you, so you know, you appreciate art, you appreciate nature, you can even appreciate mundane things like a perfectly folded napkin. If it's easy for you to be creative or insightful, so maybe you're an artist, maybe you're just a great problem solver or you're really insightful, so people often come to you for advice. If it's easy for you to create work to really high standards, you probably think of yourself as a perfectionist. And then on the flip side, if it's hard for you to handle strong negative emotions from others, so maybe you feel like a sponge just absorbing everyone's emotions from around you and other people's bad, bad moods can really throw you off. If it's hard for you to spend a lot of time in busy, noisy, or even ugly environments, so maybe if you do that, you feel really drained. If it's hard for you to ignore intrusive noises or harsh lighting, strong scents or unpleasant textures, again, I can't stand that feeling of tags in my clothes, um, other textures, so like wooden ice cream spoons. The thought of licking one of those wooden ice cream spoons, like even saying that right now, I'm getting like a shiver down my back. If it's hard for you to work while being observed, so maybe you get nervous and you might not be able to perform at your best. If it's hard for you to watch violent movies or TV shows. So this one, I don't have too much of a problem with if it's fake violence, like in a movie or TV, but if I'm watching YouTube videos, like real videos and someone gets hurt, I can't stand that. Like if someone falls on their ass, I feel that. Um, if it's hard for you to prioritize your own needs, so maybe you're just always thinking about other people. And maybe all of these things in combination make you feel overstimulated and more overwhelmed than most people would. And maybe because of this, you feel like you need a little bit more downtime than the average person. 
Now you may not resonate with all of these, but if you are nodding your head along to most of them, you quite likely have the trait of high sensitivity. Now if this entire concept is new to you, you might be having a pretty major aha moment right now and you might be feeling pretty relieved like I was. Most people are completely unaware of sensitivity as a personality trait and view it as a weakness or some sort of vulnerability um, or something that you actively need to hide or overcome more preferably. And if you are sensitive, you might've been told throughout your life that you're too sensitive or that you overreact or that you need to toughen up. If you grew up male because sensitivity is often looked at as a feminine trait, you might have felt the urge to hide this even more strongly. For me, I thought it was a weakness and I actively tried to hide it. I would actively try to make myself appear more tough just so that others wouldn't look at me as weak or vulnerable. And then as an adult, I kind of felt like, oh my gosh, shouldn't I have outgrown this by this point? So when I learned about this trait, I was so relieved. I kind of finally felt like there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing that needs to be fixed. And even if I wanted to overcome it, I can't. This is a trait. It would be like trying to change my green eyes to blue. And this kind of feels a little bit sad to be honest because I'm in my mid forties, but it kind of feels like for the first time in my life, I don't need to hide anything about myself. And that's just really empowered me to feel fully like I can be myself and really lean into the gifts that come along with high sensitivity and not worry so much about some of the challenges that it brings along. I don't need to feel guilty if I need a little bit more rest than the average person. I know now that it's what my body needs and I can respect that. I don't need to feel unintelligent or inarticulate in a conversation. I know now that my brain just takes a little bit longer to process that information. I don't feel bad now when I'm at some sort of a business event and I need to duck out just so that I can recharge for a few minutes. And you know, I don't need to feel guilty that I'm not spending the entire time networking my ass off. I can focus on having fewer but more high quality conversations with a smaller number of people. And maybe most importantly, I feel like I'm not alone. I know now that there's 20% of the population out there that is just like me. And if that 20% includes you, I hope you're feeling some of these same things as well. Now, if you are interested in learning more about sensory processing sensitivity, I totally recommend that book, Sensitive by Jen Graneman and Andre Solo. I've linked to that down below. There's also another book called The Highly Sensitive Person by Elaine Aaron. Um, she's kind of one of the first people to actually bring this research about high sensitivity as a trait to the forefront. That's another great book that I highly recommend. And if you like what you learned in this video, I invite you to sign up for my weekly newsletter. This newsletter is business and lifestyle for highly creative business owners who tend to be a little bit more on the sensitive side. So you can check that out down in the description below. And of course, give this video a like, do subscribe, hit the bell so you can be notified every time I put out one of these videos and share this video if you know someone that you think might be highly sensitive and might benefit from this video, please pass it along. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.